All right, everyone, please make sure you are on mute. You're in the 187 District Court. These are the rules of the courtroom. You're in a courtroom. That means that anything you could not do if you were physically in this courtroom, you cannot do on this Zoom screen. If you are at the Bear County Jail, you are not allowed to use the internet. I repeat, you are not allowed to use the internet. You are not allowed to use the chat box. If you do any of these things, what will end up happening is you'll be sent back to your cell and we will see you in 30 to 60 days. The only exception for that is if you're in jury trial and then we'll have you brought over for your jury trial tomorrow. To all of those people who are on bond, you're not allowed to be driving in a vehicle. If you're at work, you need to let them know that you're in court and you need to take a break. You're not allowed to be cooking food. You're not allowed to be wearing hats. You're not allowed to be doing any of this. If you behave inappropriately on the Zoom screen, it doesn't matter if you're out of county, out of state, out of country, you're gonna be required to appear in person in the 187 District Court. Courtroom is located at 300 Dolorosa. It is on the fourth floor. What you're gonna find is a lot of traffic jams, a lot of construction. If you're lucky enough to find a parking space, you're gonna find that parking spaces are very expensive now. You may need to take a via, you may need to take an Uber, you may need to take a Lyft. And when I used to ride the bus, via didn't give change back. And trust me, whenever you need change, you don't have it. So that bus ride is probably gonna cost you $20. I'm gonna open the breakout rooms. When I open breakout rooms, it's gonna invite everyone to go to a breakout room. Do not, I repeat, do not go to a breakout room unless I specifically call you by name and invite you to a breakout room. To all of the defendants and those who are accused, you will hear your attorney's name, not your name. If you don't hear your attorney's name, it's because your attorney is Zooming in another courtroom. Please do not raise your hand and tell me that your attorney is not here because we already know they're not here because I will not have called their name. To all of the defendants who are at home, you are not allowed to let your screen go dark, but for two reasons. One, you're signing paperwork, or two, someone calls you on the phone. And if someone calls you on the phone, you need to immediately decline that phone call. It, again, if anyone violates these rules, you're gonna be required to appear in court. I think we've been doing Zoom, how long, Brenda, close to three years now? So- Over, over two. Over two. <laughs> So we've been doing Zoom for over two years now. Today is not the day for you to start learning how to use Zoom. You should have learned how to do that before you came on this Zoom screen. And everybody on this docket who has been in this court before, because this is the trial docket. To attorneys, it would make things move quicker if you were add to your name, the name of your client and whether or not it's criminal trial division or family violence. If you're on a phone or if you're on your iPad or if you're on your computer, Computer, if you'll just go to where it says uh, participants, click on your name, it will say rename, and then you can add the name of your client. All right, it's foggy outside, sort of like a London weather without the, uh, wait, who is this on the iPhone? It's a uh, London weather outside, but it's Monday, so it's going to be a beautiful day. So let's not turn it into a day that's not beautiful. All right, this is the order in which the attorneys will appear. Joseph Appelt, Denny Callahan, Teresa Garcia, Abra Gutierrez, Brian Kimbrough, Christopher Castro, Bill Simmons, Scott Hill, Pat Montgomery, Victor Gomez, Mary Peterzak, and I think that's Jeannie Bloomster. Is there any attorney who's on this Zoom screen and your name was not called? And Ms. Ferguson, are you on the Zoom screen? Yes, ma'am. All right, everyone. 
if you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, no matter how small you think that plea bargain agreement is, you need to put it in the chat box to Ms. Ferguson. She'll need to know whether or not it's for time, whether or not it's for regular probation, regular, whether or not it's for deferred adjudication. She's listed on the screen as Ferguson coordinator. All right, everyone, let's make this a beautiful Monday. Put some patience in your pocket, and we're going to start assigning people to breakout rooms. Uh, Joseph Appel, thank you for changing your name. I'm going to send you to breakout room number three. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Jenny Callahan. Hi, Judge. Hi. I see you just completely changed your name. Let me see what I can do here. See, if you leave your name like that, what's going to end up happening is they're going to think. I'll try again. That's okay. I got you. They're going to think that uh, you're a defendant in a breakout room by yourself. So I'm going to send you. May I address the court? Yes. Uh, the Court of Appeals has not ruled. I have conferred at length with David Lunin. I don't need it to confer anymore. Mr. P. Right, knows right. Just give me a moment and we're going to put something on the record. Ms. Ferguson, can you have David Lunin pop in, please? Just give us a moment. Yes, ma'am. Teresa Garcia, thank you for changing your name. I'm going to give morning, you a Jeff. minus. <laughs> because I'm giving you an A minus because is your client criminal trial division or family violence? He is regular judge. <laughs> okay. Oh, am I supposed to put that down? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I almost got an A plus. You almost did. <laughs> okay, I'm going to send you to number four. Thank you, Judge. Albert Gutierrez, I'm going to send you to number five. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for adding to your name, A plus for you. Brian Kimbrough. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, I'm here, Judge. Um, criminal trial. Okay, I'll send you uh, to number six. Thank you. Christopher Castro. Yes, Judge. I'll send you to number seven. Thank you. Bill Simmons. Good morning, Your Honor. I have uh, Davis Viegas. He is a uh, uh, family uh, family. All right, I'm going to send you to number eight. <laughs> Scott Hill, I'm going to send you to number nine. Good morning, Judge. Judge, Good just morning. let me know, I haven't had any contact with my client. I don't know if he's logged in. I don't see him. All, All right. right. Let me see if Jonathan Tate is here. <clears throat> All right. I give everyone till 1030 if you want to come back at 1030. Okay, Judge. Thank you. Pat Montgomery. Going once, twice. going twice. twice. Victor Gomez. Victor Gomez, going once. Yes. Right there. Morning, Judge. He's Sorry. Uh, in person court, uh, I have Mr. Reginald Hunter. Just one second. <laughs> Okay. Criminal trauma leads for family violence. Criminal trauma. MTR. All right. I'm going to send you to breakout room uh, number one. Thank you. Mary Peterzak. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. I'm going to send you to number 10. Thank you for Thank changing you, your name. Thank you, Judge. And I think um, I think we are going to do a plea today. Is there time to do that this morning? Oh, yes. There's always time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Jeannie Bloomster. I'm going to send you to number 11. Thank you, Judge. George Sherman. 
Here I am, Judge, and my client's in the courtroom. We're going to confer. All right, I'm going to send you to number 12. Thank you. Is there any attorney who's on the Zoom screen who has not been um, sent to a breakout room? Judge, good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm scheduled this afternoon, but if I could get in a breakout room with Brittany Sparks. All right, I'm going to send you to 13. That's a lucky that's breakout room. Don't turn it into an unlucky breakout room. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, uh, on pew, just one moment. Ah, there is an attorney here. Just give me one second. All right, we're going to go on the record and put the status of this case on the record. All right, the court is calling 2018 CR 6054, State of Texas versus Kadreen Pugh. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Stacey Harrington for the state. For the defense? Kenny Callahan for defense, not ready. All right, and are you Mr. Pugh? Could you unmute for me, sir? It's the longest key on the keyboard. Just hold it down. Are you Kadreen Q? Uh, I grant that name to court on a special deposit for a future return on my interest, Your Honor. All right, thank you very much for your announcement. That's for the record, that's Kadeen, Kadeen, Kadeen Q. Uh, Mr. Callahan, is that your client, Mr. Pew? Yes, ma'am. All right. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor. It's the court's understanding that there's a still uh, an appending pill in 2018 CR 6054. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Callahan? Yes, ma'am. Right. State, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. His In cause number 2018 CR 6052, Mr. Pugh is scheduled for trial. Defense, you've announced not ready. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Are you requesting uh, defense and state that the trial in cause number 2018 CR 6052 not be called or take place until the appeal is, in fi is final in cause number 2018 CR 6054 state? That is correct, Judge. Defense? Correct, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, uh, can I have a reset date on Mr. Pugh? Um, Mr. Callahan, when do you think that um, final notice will be given? Um, that would be speculation. I'll say three weeks. All right. Ms. Ferguson, can you reset Mr. Pugh for 45 days, please? And of course, Mr. Uh, Callahan, if that is done before then, just let the court know and we'll put him on the docket sooner than that. Yes, ma'am. And I'm just waiting for a check. Uh, so we're gonna come back on May 23rd. May I address the court, will it be in person? Uh, no, you'll appear on Zoom on that date. And then uh, what will end up happening if nothing is able to be worked out then we will have um, a jury trial the very next day. Yes, ma'am. May I be excused? Uh, yes. And it appears that your client is trying to say he is incompetent by his announcement. So if you would like to have him evaluated, uh, please do that before that day. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you need to speak with your client? Yes, ma'am. All right. When I send you to the breakout room, uh, Mr. Uh, Callahan, make sure that your client um, comes out of the breakout room before you leave the breakout, breakout room. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, fine, you just.
I'm sending you to number two. Got it. And Mr. Peer, I'm sure you know how to get to breakout room number two. All right, Ms. Harrington, if you don't have anyone else with us, you're excused. Thank you, Judge. All right, any of the attorneys who have not been assigned to breakout rooms? Good morning, Judge. Um, Christine McDonald appearing on behalf of Rachel Adias. If I can meet with my client briefly. I'm gonna send you to number 15. Thank you, Ms. Judge. Arias, if you'll go to 15, please. And everyone just give me a moment while I sign paperwork. All right, thank you, Mr. Uh, Callahan. You're excused. Norma 16B, Pew can go back. Your Honor, may I address the court? Yes. Mr. Pew's not incompetent, but he wishes to represent himself. I told him that you would question him or advise him to the unadvisability of that at some point in time. All right, thank you. Well, the way he's addressing himself to the court is improper. So it appears that he is not qualified to be an attorney for himself. I don't know why people think being an attorney is so easy that we can all do it in a day when it took everyone here at least, well, at a, I would say at a maximum, 
seven years. You know, people think they can read a book and they've gone to law school. If that were the way things could be done, then everybody would do it and nobody would have wasted time uh, obtaining law school loans. I understand. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Pugh, uh, we're going to send you back and we will see you uh, on May 23rd. Norman, Mr. Pugh can go back. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Happy Bye -bye. Monday. Happy Monday. Good to see you. All right. You too. All right. Have there been any other attorneys who've come back from the breakout room? Uh, Your Honor, I've come oh. back. From... Go ahead. All right, everyone. Just give me one moment. And any attorneys who have not been assigned to a breakout room? Monica Guerrero. All right. Uh, who do you represent? I have a plea ready for Arthur Scarborough. I also have Adam Gonzalez, and I have a motion hearing with for Talia Harris. Lots of folks. Okay, Adam Gonzalez, is that criminal trial division or family violence? That's criminal trial division, Your Honor. And on Harris, is that criminal trial division or family violence? Uh, I believe it's criminal trial division as well. All right, I'm gonna send you, uh, they're gonna be swearing your client in, but I'm gonna send you to breakout room number 16. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Neil Kaffas, I'm gonna send you to number 17. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. And Mr. Scarborough, I'm gonna send you to number two. Thank you. To be sworn in, and they will let you know if they have all your paperwork. And to attorneys, if you allow your screen to go blank or black or dark, then I won't be able to see you. So right now, I'm trying to find Albert Gutierrez. Judge, he just stepped away. Judge. All right. All right. Jay Norton, Adam Carroll, what's happening? <clears throat> uh, judge, uh... I've conferred with Ms. Sparks, uh, but we also have a, an issue with Mr. Carroll. He apparently tested positive for COVID and is at the doctor's uh, scheduled at 11 o'clock. All right, but what is happening with Mr. Carroll? Um, well, we're still conferring, Judge. I don't, if Brittany's around, I guess she could. Um, we, we floated a counter offer and uh, we will see. She's going to talk to Ryan and some others about it. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I'm being told that Mr. Carroll has a medical issue. Can you reschedule this within 14 days? And after this 14 day period, the court will not consider any plea agreements. So if I can have a 14 day reset on Mr. Carroll. Judge, as far as plea agreements, uh, it's an, an MTR based on an unindicted new case. Uh, so we're trying to obviously make a package deal. But, uh, the, the case itself is not even indicted. No, I have. Uh, He's on, on, his, M yes. on his MTR. He, I mean, I understand that there's a case that's undicted, which is a uh, possession, but yes. he has more than one number one, new number one. He has yes, an unlawfully carrying as well. So, Norma, can we have a 15, I mean, a 14 day reset, please? Judge, uh, does the court require any documentation about the positive? I, I have it if you need it. Well, I mean, you're an officer of the court. You're telling me you've seen it, you have it. I, I will trust you, Mr. Norton. Thank you, ma'am. Should I not trust you? No, 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 you should. I was in <laughs> 13, so. 
I, I don't want to do anything to, to mar the image of number 13. Okay, yes, do not do that. But no, usually sometimes I have an attorney who will say, my, a client, my client told me, and I'm like, have you seen anything? They're like, no. All right, we'll see you on April 14th. April 14th? Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, you're excused. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Can everyone just give me a moment? All right, uh, Teresa Garcia. Yes, Judge, um, I'm back with talking to Joe Ray and um, it seems that my client, Julia Martinez has uh, two attorneys, myself and, and Jeannie Bloomster. And he was set for last week for court on Jeannie Bloomster's indicted case and that he didn't show up. And now he's not here today either. Um, mine are all pre-indictment. Uh, okay, and I haven't good. been able to locate him. All right, thanks. We're going to take care of that right now. Is there a prosecutor available? I just conferred on with the prosecutor. All right, let me see if I have a prosecutor on the Zoom screen. Is there a prosecutor available? All right, we're just gonna wait a little bit till we have a prosecutor available because it appears that there's not a single prosecutor available. Just give me a moment. Okay. First thing, sign this. Just give me a moment. I'm going to get a prosecutor from one of the breakout rooms. Uh, Joe Ray? Yes, Judge. Right. The court is going to call 2022 CR 1742 and 2022 CR 1741 State of Texas versus Julian Martinez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Joe Ray Garcia. For the defense? <laughs> I'm sorry, could you restate your name, please? Judge, um, I'm not sure if those are my cases. This uh, judge, for the record, Teresa Garcia. I think those are Jeannie Bloomster's cases because the yes. ones I've been appointed. Okay. Uh, uh, they are. Sorry. sorry, Jeannie Bloomster for the defendant. All right. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor. All right. This case was previously set and it was called back for the defendant to appear. Uh, it this hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now 9.39 a.m. 
defense? Have you had any contact with your client? No, Your Honor, I have not been able to contact my client. Uh, and Ms. Garcia, have you been able to contact your client? No, Judge, I have not. And for the record, I believe you're the attorneys on, um, you're the attorney on CM094619, CM096449, CM096448, CM096447, and CM0964. Five zero. Yes, Judge. Uh, Ms. Bloomster, have you tried to contact your client? Yes, Judge. I talked to him in the past, um, but not recently. All right, Ms. Garcia, have you tried to contact Mr. Martinez? Yes, I have, Judge. I called uh, the number that was listed on my appointment order um, and left. Um, well, I wasn't able to leave a message because his message system wasn't set up, but I text messaged him. And then I also tried to call him on the number that was listed on the violation report by the probation officer and to no avail. All right, state. It asks that the defendant's bond be forfeited and a warrant be issued for his arrest. All right, that'll be granted. And I'll remain your client with that bond. If you have any contact with Mr. Uh, Martinez and he presents himself, the court will reconsider. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Yes, you may be excused. Thank you. Christine McDonald. Good morning, Judge. We um, are, well, I'm here to proceed with Rachel Adias' sentencing. Um, we did not her plea last week. All right, just give me a moment. Okay. Uh, Joseph Appel. Yes, Your Honor. Um, if I could be placed in a breakout room with my client, Mr. Manuel uh, Robert Sanchez, please. All right. If you'll go back to breakout number three, is your client in custody? He is in custody, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Sanchez, if you'll go to breakout room number three. And then finally, here is the plea bargain. Bill I Simmons. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have uh, Mr. Davis Viegas. We have a new offer that's been conveyed from the state, but I have tried to contact my client. I've not been able to get contact uh, with him. Of Call the number that he's had before. We sent him an email as well, letting him know he needs to appear this morning. So we're hoping that he appears this morning. He does a pretty good job of coming to court, but he usually comes in person. Um, but uh, we have a new offer to convey. We're hoping that that offer would uh, wrap this up, Judge. All right. Is there a prosecutor available? Sometimes, like, sometimes. Yes, Judge. All right. The court is calling. 2021 CR2745 State of Texas versus Davis Viegas. Can I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Marcus Sanders. For the defense? Uh, Bill Simmons. All right, this uh, case is proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No objection. Any objection from the defense? No objection, Your Honor. All right, this case was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now uh, 9 43 a.m. Yeah, I'll uh, defense, uh, have you had okay. any contact with your client? I'm sorry, Judge. I, I didn't hear. I didn't. Have you had any contact with your client? I've had contact with him previously, Judge, at the numbers that we have. I attempted to call him uh, yesterday, the day before. We've also sent him an email to the email address that we have with the information. Uh, and we'll continue to try to contact him today, Judge. I, I, there may have been some confusion, uh, but he but he usually comes in person regardless. So, and he he did get this state. All right. So uh, when was the notice of this? The attorney's here, and then I haven't gone. Mr. Simmons, I'll wait till you finish with whatever. With the I, that, that not supposed to be. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll we'll take you up later. Thank My you, Mr. Uh, Sanders. No problem. Yes. Brian Kimbrough. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, conferred on uh, Mr. Sancho. There's outstanding discovery on two cases that are going to be part of the agreement. So the prosecution is going to send me the discovery and hopefully an offer, and then I can meet with my client. Where's uh, your client? He should be Mr. Adam Sancho. He should be logged in or logging in. He just called me and said he was logging in. So 
All right, he's not here. As soon as he shows up, we'll take up your banner. Thank you. All right, who are the prosecutors on Arias? Judge, I was conferring with Michelle Hayden. All right, as soon as she's out of a breakout room, we'll take your matter up. Charles Buck, I will send you uh, to breakout room number eight. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right, Victoria Cruz. Good morning, Your Honor. I've conferred on Mark Anthony Rodriguez. He's on the trial lineup, criminal trial division, ag assault with a deadly weapon. Yes. Um, we are not able to reach a deal at this time. We tried to negotiate, but we're not, we're not on the same page. Uh, defense is ready, subject to some discovery issues. The state has just apprised us that they uploaded a phone dump. They are not, they don't, they don't think that there's anything in there that necessarily they might use, but I still have to look through it and it's a lot. Um, Who I'm hoping, with? Uh, Joe Ray Garcia. Just one moment. Yes, Your Honor. As soon as he comes out of the breakout room, we'll take up this matter. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mary Peterzak. Uh, yes, Judge. Um, if I could go to a breakout room with um, Mr. Damien to finish that MTR paperwork. All right, Mr. Uh, Damien, I'm going to send you to number nine. And Ms. Peterzak, if you'll go to number nine. Uh, Ernest Acevedo, who do you have? Uh, one Carvajal, uh, CTD case. I'm going to send you to number uh, 16. Okay. Martin Guerra, I'm going to send you to number 17. All right, Mr. Uh, Pelt on uh, Mr. Sanchez. Yes, uh, if I may confer one last time with uh, Joe Ray, please. All right, I'll send you to number four. Thank you. Brian Kimbrough, not here. All right, uh, Sharman. 
Judge, we have a plea bargain agreement. I think that I'm going to need a month or so to get an immigration opinion. As soon as I get that opinion, then we will plead. Okay, so this is what the court is not understanding. And I do have patience in my pocket. I really do. But I don't understand last minute phone dumps. You what? Uh, I don't understand the last minute phone dumps that are happening. And this is for Miss Cruz and Miss Cruz, that's the state not doing last minute phone dumps. And is your client Angel Mejia? He is, he's in the courtroom. All right, to the court, if I could have Mr. Mejia, please. He doesn't speak English. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can we get an interpreter, please? Mr. Sherman, as soon as we get an interpreter, we'll take your matter up. Can I appear in the courtroom with him? Yes. Thank you. Have a seat. Christopher Castro. Yes, Judge. Yes. Oh, yes. sorry. Uh, I'm here on the MTR for Mr. Harrow, um, stating and uh, defensive breach and agreement. We're ready to go forward when the court has time. All right. Have you signed the paperwork? Uh, no, I just messaged normal right now. All right. Then once you receive your paperwork, if you'll go to number seven and fill that out with your client. Understood. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. And on um, Christine McDonald, we're just waiting for somebody from Family Violence to take up your um, sentencing. Okay, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. May I approach, Your Honor? Who is asking to approach? Uh, Attorney Bill Simmons. Yes. Uh, my apologies for that ruckus earlier. Um, but again, we've tried to contact Mr. Viegas. Um, he was given notice of this setting on last week. And we also tried to call him yesterday to get him to update his contact information. Uh, I would say there may be a scintilla of confusion about the Zoom hearing this morning, but I, I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to uh, represent that to the court without talking to him, which I've not been able to do. All right, then, but, uh, we will recall this for March 28th and he needs to be in person. He's scheduled for jury trial. Yes, sir, for tomorrow, Judge? Yes, tomorrow at 9 yes, a.m. Yes, right, thank you. May I be excused? Yes. And Ms. Cruz, we're just waiting for a prosecutor. And also waiting for a prosecutor for you, Ms. Uh, McDonald. Hi, uh, Judge. Uh, this is Joe Ray. I know you're waiting on a prosecutor. Uh, yes. It's yes, for Victoria Cruz's case. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, Ms. Cruz's case on Mark Rodriguez. She's saying that there's just been a phone dump. Yes, Judge, there was. Um, there's a co defendant. I noticed that it wasn't uploaded to both defendants, only his Dakota defendant, so I made her aware of it this morning and uploaded it to eDiscovery. Okay, this case has been going on since 2019. 
there's been a discovery acknowledgement that was filed. Why are we just finding out about a cell phone now? Uh, we did, we have known about it, Your Honor, but I didn't, there was a mistake on not up, uploading it to both cases. Um, I don't know if the fence had received it any other way earlier. Uh, I don't think they had based on our discussion. But what it matters with this, I don't know if this matters to the court or not, but this doesn't intend to use any of that information. All right, defense. Uh, I know you're saying that it's gonna take you a while to look through that information, but I'm gonna still recall you for tomorrow and just let me know where you're at as far as viewing the information and how much it is. Understood, Your Honor. And I have ran the inquiry. Um, and as soon as it, it becomes available, I'll start going through it quickly. All right. And where is your client? Uh, he is logged on. Mr. Rodriguez, can you speak up, please? I just saw him. Yes, he's not here. I just saw him before I went into the breakout room. I will fish him out from wherever he is. Um, okay. I, I will, I'll bring him back, Your Honor, and then I'll just, um, I'll raise my little virtual hand or something whenever I have it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, I apologize. No problem. Where is he? All right, Joseph Appel. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have an agreement uh, for a plea bargain with respect to Mr. Sanchez. However, I need to be I need to go to the 399th because they're waiting on me. I have a client over there. I'm not sure when um, I'm not sure if we'd be able to get the plea paperwork all done today is my concern. Could we possibly recall this for tomorrow uh, afternoon? I know I have something in the morning as well tomorrow. I could possibly if we get all the plea paperwork done. We can knock out the plea first thing in the morning and I could go. Uh, no, we're starting jury trial at 9 a.m. Yeah. Okay. The court will be available to do this plea. So you can go to your other court. Have you given Ms. Ferguson the plea bargain agreement? I have not yet, Your Honor. All right. We'll be here till 12. Okay. I'll do my best to get this knocked out then, Judge. All right. Thank you. Brenna, do you see what page Manuel Sanchez is on? Page 12, Judge. All right, thank you. Christopher Castro? Yes, Judge. Yes, what is happening with your case? Oh, I, I announced we're waiting for the uh, MTR paperwork. All right, thank you. Judge, I still need his uh, defendant's email address. I can't oh, send anything. I apologize. Like that. I'll get that over to you right now. Thank you. Brian Kimbra. Yes, Your Honor. Is my client on? Adam Sancho. All right, just one moment. Adam Sancho. He's under the name Mary Sancho, I think because his mother's phone. There is no Mary Sancho. No Mary Sancho? Okay. I'm here. Oh. What name are you listed as? It says Adam Sancho, what I'm looking at right now. All right, what is happening with Mr. Sancho? Uh, Your Honor, I confer there is a uh, discovery that is outstanding that there 
prosecution prosecutors get me uh, on two other cases that are uh, either unindicted or outstanding that are going to be part of the agreement and they're going to send an offer. So I'd like to reset it once and then see if we can resolve it at that time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All right, Ms. Ferguson or Mr. Sancho, can you set reset this for uh, three weeks, please? Gomez. All right, we're going to come back on April 14th. You're excused. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. She could hear you. Judge, All right, Mr. Gomez. Yes, Judge, I conferred with uh, Mr. Marcus Sanders. Uh, we have an agreement to alter an amend. I'm just waiting for the paperwork just to get an update. All right, thank you. Uh, Judge, that uh, paperwork has been sent. All right, uh, Neil Kaffas. Okay. Judge, I, I, uh, I uh, talked to Michelle Hayden on Darren Doe's, and um, they've they're what she's waiting on some more discovery. Um, she's recently, since our last setting, downloaded or uploaded some discovery for me to look at. Um, and then we also have the continuation of his bond hearing this afternoon. I also have Victor Rivas on your docket, and I need to speak to someone in the CTD on that. All right. Then you say Mr. Doe's is for this afternoon? Well, we, we, I think we have a, the continuation. We, we started a bond hearing on yes. him and then it's, it's, I can, I mean, I'm, I'm ready on it. I don't think the case is really ready on either side, but um, I think the state would have more problems prosecuting the case than I would defending it at this point. Um, but for whatever it's worth. Okay. Well, if you go back to number 13, that's a lucky breakout room. Um, we'll see what happens. Thank you. My email. You're welcome. Leo Gonzalez, who do you have? Your Honor, I have uh, Mr. I just blanked on his name, I'm sorry. Um, Moses Vargas. Criminal trial division or family violence? Criminal trial, Your Honor. She could hear you. All right, I'm gonna send you to breakout room number 17. Thank you. All right. Is there a family violence prosecutor available in areas? All right. Uh, yes. Courtroom. Good morning, Judge. I'm here on Jesse Esparza. All right. Is that criminal trial division or family violence? It's going to be family violence, Judge. And can you repeat the uh, name again, please? Jesse Esparza. He's on your recall docket. Is it criminal trial division or family violence? It's uh, aggravated sexual assault, Judge. So I assume family. All right. What I can tell you is we have only one family violence prosecutor today. So if you want to leave, and come back at 1030, then we can take up your, your matter. Very well, Judge. All thank right, you. thank you. And then courtroom, if you'll let me know when the uh, interpreter comes or shows up on Zoom or either in the courtroom, please.
Judge uh, Mary Peters, if, if I could have um, Damien come to the breakout room I was in so we can finish the paperwork. All right, Damien, if you'll go to number 10, please. Um, how do I do that? Um, do you see at the bottom where it says breakout rooms? It says participants, chat, breakout rooms. At the very bottom of your screen. Do you see a chat box? It's a square. It's white. It says yeah, it chat. Yeah, it says chat. It says chat. Yeah, it says chat. Do you see where it says breakout rooms? There are four little square boxes. No. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can you send someone to help Mr. Uh, Damien go to a breakout room, please? We're on the way, Judge. Michelle Hayden. Yes, Judge. Are you ready to proceed on areas? Uh, yes, Your Honor, and I believe we have victim impact for that one. All right, Brenna, are you ready? I'm ready. Court is calling 2021 CR 8951 State of Texas versus Rachel Arias. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. For the defense? Christine McDonald for the defendant. And are you Miss Arias? Yes, ma'am, I am. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor. Ms. Arias, you entered a plea on March 16th. You entered a plea of guilty. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty, but deferred finding of guilt as you have applied for deferred adjudication. According to the plea bargain agreement, there's to be a $1,000 fine probated. Uh, the state is recommending deferred adjudication. They're taking several cases into consideration. Are both parties ready to proceed with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, states, you're recommending deferred adjudication? That is correct. All right. Uh, anything you wish to say? Uh, no, Your Honor. Just uh, we may have victim impact, as I mentioned. 
All right, uh, defense, anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, um, we're respectfully requesting that you follow the plea bargain and we would like the opportunity to address um, the evaluations that the state is requesting, uh, both the Nick Myoff and the top evaluation judge. All right, Ms. Arias, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and confirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, you can lower your hand. Have you ever received any mental health diagnosis? Yes, ma'am, I have. And what was that for? Um, a couple of things, uh, bipolar two depression, major depressive disorder, um, medical condition insomnia, and borderline personality disorder. Have you ever, um, well, when's the last time you were under a doctor's care for your mental health issue? Ma'am, I'm still under a doctor's care currently at the moment at Center for Healthcare Services um, up the road on South Korea. All right. What started all of this that happened? Um, the violence in the house? Yes. Um, basically, uh, um, well, I I feel to believe that it was over. I'm, I grew up in a very religious household. I don't believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And... Um, that's really what it narrows down to. They say that it could be like like the drinking, but drinking is like not not a problem. Um, well, do, it, you, do you drink alcohol? I did. I did. I haven't drank in a long time. What is a long time? Oh gosh, um, months. Were you when you say months? Have you not been drinking since you've been in the Bear County Jail? But you were drinking before. You went to the Bear County Jail? No, it's um, this has been going on. I guess I uh, caught this case like a year ago. I was like when a phase, but it's really over. They're Catholic. I'm not. I'm so it's. I felt attacked in the house against, especially the women in my family. Uh, so that's what I believe for it to be. I can't really state it to be any other thing except for for that that's how it feels and that's how it was and that's how i that's how i personally believe for it to be true all right well you understand that there's to be uh no contact yes ma'am so you're not to go to that household anymore or have any contact they may want to have contact at some point in time but as for now there is to be no contact Do you understand yes ma'am that won't be a problem i understand that that means no phone calls, none of that. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you have any children? Yes, ma'am, I do. I have uh, my firstborn son. He stays there, uh, resides there at the house with my dad. And how old is your child? He's eight years old. And you say firstborn. So do you have more than one child? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my firstborn uh, child, my daughter, she's with her dad. Um, if she stays here downtown on Florida Street. Um, no, no, no. How many, how many children do you have? I have three. What so are their ages? 16, 8, and I believe he's 17 months now. All right. Where is the 16-year-old? With her dad on uh, 203. I don't, need the, I don't need the address. I just need to know where she is. Where is the 16-year-old? Uh, with her dad, her biological where, dad. Where is the 8-year-old? with my parents on the address where the family violence happened. And where is that child's father? Um, he's he's around. Uh, my dad talks to him from time to time. I don't really have the phone calls to talk to him in here, but uh, yeah. All right, and where is the 17 month old? Um, with um, a baby, with the baby's grandparents, the other grandparents. Is Child Protective Services involved? Not that I'm aware of, not anymore, ma'am. Everything's closed. When were the cases closed? I'm not too sure. I haven't spoken to my my son's grandma in a minute. I'm not sure. All right, Are you? have you been employed before this happened? Have I been employed? Yes, ma'am. I do reach okay. out. Doing what? Well, I was a... Uh, I, I was a cashier at Dollar General, and then I also worked at Walgreens Pharmacy. 
I no longer do pharmacy anymore. All right, have you ever used drugs? Yes, ma'am. What type of drugs? Um, meth. I drink and I smoke weed. All right, any other questions from the state or the No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, so there's a... So the state is asking for a MIC evaluation. You wanted to address that, Ms. McDonald? Yes, Judge. Um, I, I do believe my client needs treatment. I was just hoping that this court would consider allowing those to be done out of custody. She did mention that she is with the Center for Healthcare Services. So until those evaluations are complete, um, she, she should be able to continue with them, Judge. And we're just respectfully requesting that the court consider that due to the amount of time it takes for the evaluation to be done. Ms. Uh, Arias, where are you going to be living if you were released? Because you can't go back to that home. So where would you be living? I stay ever at the shelter at Haven for Hope. All right, anything from the state? No, Your Honor. Do you want to speak towards the MIC evaluation in our out of custody? Judge, we'll defer to the court for that. I mean, we do want the evaluation. Uh, the defendant herself has mentioned the struggle she's had with mental health issues, um, but we'll let the court decide how she wants to handle it. <laughs> All right, uh, Ms. Reyes, how long is it for a MIC evaluation? Judge, she's already set up for an appointment for April 11th. Last time at, um, when she made her plea, uh, you requested a mental health and a TAP. Neither have been performed at this time, but the mental health is scheduled for April 11th. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Arias? Yes, ma'am. They're going to have your evaluation scheduled on April 11th. If that evaluation doesn't take place on April 11th, you will be released on April 12th. You understand? I will be what? I'm sorry. I said, if that evaluation, if something happens and that evaluation doesn't take place on April 11th, then mm -hmm. you will be released on April 12th. Do you understand? I will not keep you in custody past April 11th. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, this is what the court is going to do. A thousand dollar fine, probated, six years deferred adjudication, MIC evaluation while in custody. Defendant is to be released from custody no later than April 12th. This is to run concurrent with County Court Cause Number 665510, and that is to be a judgment satisfied. The state will take into consideration the following cause numbers. County Court Cause Numbers 665511-673835, JN Number 2014449, Grand Jury Number 759526. There's to be 120 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination with the booster. The court is not requiring you to get the COVID vaccination, but if you do, 40 of those hours will be waived. Anger management. There's to be no contact with Joyce Arias. Thank 
439 McKinley Avenue. With regards to the seven month old child, well, I guess there's to be no contact with the children of Joyce areas, parenting classes. You're going to be required to uh, complete parenting classes, but if you complete those parenting classes, the remainder of your community service hours will be waived. Uh, cognitive behavior class. Continued treatment. Through Center for Healthcare Services. Proof of employment or SSI within 30 days of release. No employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Field visits two times per month, random. Random UAs. And um, Miss Arias, are you able to Zoom? Um, do you have a phone to Zoom or no? Um, if I'm given a, a like a, a date and time like expected, uh, I'm I'm able to have a phone. Like All right, we're gonna do um, regular Zoom reporting or in person. So if you can't Zoom, you'll need to report in person. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, Rebecca, is there anything else that she needs? Uh, no, ma'am, that's it. Miss Arias, is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? No, ma'am. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Ms. Arias, good luck to you. What I've learned is that people who have mental health issues, it's like anything else. It's like me and my allergy medicine. You start feeling well, you don't want to take the medication, and then things go haywire. For me, I always end up with a sinus infection or an ear infection. Now, if I continue to take the medication on a daily basis, everything will be fine. I think after the sixth time, I've learned my lesson. So in your case, I know there's always sometimes side effects. So if there are side effects, you need to let your doctor know. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, Ms. Arias. Ms. Arias, I'm gonna send you to breakout room uh, number one. There's gonna be a victim impact. And with regards to that victim impact, just internalize what's being said, okay? Of course. All right, to court to the courtroom, could you go to breakout room number one, please? And Ms. Do you want me to go in now or do you want me to wait here for another plea? Uh let me see. Just one moment. Yes, if you could wait here for another plea. Yes, ma'am. All right, and uh, Ms. McDonald, I'm going to send you to breakout room number one. And then Marina Wolf Winter is the only person here uh, is by the name of Joyce. Is that correct? Yes, I think it's under Joyce's iPhone. <laughs> and I, I already put her in number one. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Miss um, Nero, just give us a moment, please. All right, Albert Gutierrez. I'm back, Your Honor. Sorry for having stepped out. Um, no problem. 
And Ms. Nero, could you give us just a brief moment? They're doing a victim impact and number, number one, as soon as they finish, then I'll take up your matter. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, Kelly Piddle on Barbosa. Um, it's I'm out. sorry, not <laughs> Kelly Piddle, Albert Gutierrez. Uh, uh, something happened, okay. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah, I think I think Mr. Groomer has a, an announcement. Yes, Judge. Um, the, this is Ryan, Judge. Uh, just so you know, Judge, on that particular case, we are uh, dismissing the case. I'll submit a dismissal through Adobe to you in the next five. All right. Thank you. Then, Mr. Gutierrez, you are excused, and you were not even in breakout room number uh, thirteen. What, what's your room number? You need to let everyone know. Uh, I apologize. I, I had to step off for another Zoom, Judge. Yeah. My, my apologies after I spoke with Mr. Groomer, and then he called me on my cell phone. Uh, ordered me. Right. Right. Ahorita me dijo que ya me iba a mandar. Okay, thank you. Then you and your client are excused. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, Monica Guerrero. Hi, Judge. Hi. So I have a plea ready that I believe Mr. Scarborough has been sworn in. Yes. I have, apparently Adam Gonzalez is there, but he has not responded to the request to come to the breakout room where I'm at to confer with him. And right, I have to talk to Ms. Hayden about the bond conditions on Ms. Harris. All right, so let me send you to a breakout room number two, Ms. Guerrero. And I'm gonna send Miss Miss Hayden will be in there shortly, but don't go yet because she's in breakout room number one. So just give us a moment. Uh, Martin Guerra. Morning, Judge. Good morning. I just uh, conferred with Michelle Hayden uh, regarding Bobby Jackson. I still need to confer with somebody from CTD regarding Mr. Kochansky. All right, so let me send you back to a breakout room. And if someone from CTD can confer with Mr. Uh, Guerra, and Mr. Guerra, if you can go to number 16 and make sure Mr. Jackson comes back to the main room, please. Thank you. Kelly Piddle, who do you have? I have Daniel Trevino. Um, I don't see him on the Zoom, but I haven't been able to get a hold of him this morning. Okay. I don't see the picture on the screen. All right, is there a prosecutor available? I can do it, Judge. It's Ryan. Thank you. All right. The court is calling 2021 CR 0698, State of Texas versus Daniel Trevino. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Ryan Groomer for the state of Texas. For the defense? Kelly Piddle. All right. We're proceeding by Zoom because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? None from the state. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor. Uh, this hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It's now 10.29 a.m. Uh, Deputy Laura, has there been a Daniel Trevino in the courtroom? No, Your Honor, he has not. And there is not a Daniel Trevino on the Zoom screen. Mr. Piddle, have you had any contact with your client? Not since last time, Your Honor. Have you tried to contact your client? Yes, all right, state. Judge, at this point, the state would move, uh, would ask the court to uh, revoke uh, his bond and uh, remand him without bond. All right, court will grant the motion, issue the bond for uh, would, sure. would you uh, Would you consider just raising the bond $1,000? Uh, why are you requesting that I do that? So that he, if he does, to get arrested, he's, he'd be able to bond out on a nonviolent offense. All right. The court is going to issue the bond forfeiture, remand him without bond. Counsel, if you're able to get in touch with your client and he makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, Brenda, what page is Mr. Trevino on? Uh, Judge, this is George Sherman. May I approach? It's on page, page 12. All right. Thank you. I have a excuse, Judge. Uh, no. All right. Thank you, Mr. P uh, Piddle. You're excused. Thank you. Welcome. Judge, it's George Sherman. May I approach? Just give me a moment. Yes, I, I hear you. Just, just a moment, everyone. I'm, I'm only one person. 
And Brenna, as my mom would say, I'm, I'm human. I'm only human. I'm not, you know, I'm not made up iron or steel. All right, Ms. Ferguson on Mr. Angel Mejia. Can I have a 30 day reset, please? If you can put that in the chat box. All right, we're gonna go on the record. The court is calling 2022 CR 1469, Angel Mejia Apolinar. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have an interpreter present. If the interpreter, uh, if you could raise your uh, right hand, please. And we're not gonna use the interpreter function. Okay, Your Honor. Do you solemnly swear or affirm you will faithfully translate from English into Spanish and first Spanish. So help you God. I do, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, you can lower your hand. Thank you. And are you Angel Mejia Apolinar? Ustedes, uh, Angel Mejia Apolinar. Sí, soy yo. Yes, that's me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sharman, it's the court's understanding that uh, Mr. Uh, Mejia Apolinar is not a citizen. Is that correct? Eh, that is correct, Your Honor. Señor Sherman, eh, eh, enten, eh, se tiene entendido que el señor Mejía Apolinar no es uh, eh, ciudadano. Sí, su señor, y eso es correcto. All right, Mr. Sherman, if you could wait until after the interpreter interprets my question before answering, that would be appreciated. Eh, y señor eh, Sherman, por favor, espere a que la intérprete interprete la, interprete la pregunta que, eh, que yo haga primero. All right, Mr. Sherman, it's the court's understanding that Mr. Mejia needs to confer with an immigration attorney, is that correct? Y señor Sherman, eh, en, el, es el entendimiento de este tribunal que el señor Mejía Apolinar necesita consultar con un abogado de migración, ¿eso es correcto? That's correct. Eso es correcto. Mr. Sherman, uh, is he going to hire one or does he need an, an immigration attorney appointed? Y señor Sherman, eh, él va a contratar a un abogado de migración o necesita que se le asigne uno? They will hire one. Van a contratar uno. All right. <clears throat> Then, uh, Mr. Sherman, your client's new court date is May 2nd. Ok, señor Sherman, la nueva fecha de corte de su cliente es el 2 de mayo. Uh, the court will expect by that time your client to have received whatever information he needs from an immigration attorney. Y ese tribunal espera que para esa fecha su cli el, el señor Mejía Polinar ya haya recibido información de migración necesaria. Thank you, Your Honor. Gracias, Thank you. su señoría. All right, your client will need to remain in court until he's given a reset form. Y su cliente va a tener que permanecer en la corte hasta que se le entregue una forma con la nueva fecha. All right, I see that you have the reset form in your hand. You and your client are excused. Y veo que ya tiene la, la, el documento con la nueva fecha. Usted y su cliente se pueden retirar. Thank you, Judge. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. Have You're a great... welcome, Judge. You, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Judge, may I be excused, please? No, you may not. If I haven't excused you, then no, you may not be excused. Mm. Everyone just give me a moment. All right, Victoria Cruz. Yes. Yes, Your Honor, I apologize. Mark Rodriguez um, is here. Mr. Rodriguez, can you speak up, please? And turn your camera on. Yes, yes. Go. And I apologize. He he's tried to switch devices and it backfired on him. But he was here. All right. Then you and your client are excused. We'll see you tomorrow in court. 
Yes, ma'am. Pressed and dressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love that expression, pressed and dressed. I like it. <laughs> I miss my suits. Have a good okay. time. Uh, Matthew Allen, I'm going to send you to breakout room number three. Thank you, Judge. Scott Hill, I'm going to send you to breakout room number four. Uh, Judge, I was just checking back in because I couldn't find my client. I don't think he's logged back in. Uh, nope. I was able to find a an email address for him uh, this morning, but I haven't heard anything back yet. And is your client Jonathan Tate? Yes, ma'am. Brenda, do you see what page he's on? I look. Ah. All right, let me find the violation report on him. Judge, I know, I think he's at Haven for Hope, but. Um... All right, to the clerks, could I please have the violation report on Jonathan Tate? Yes, Judge. Yes, ask him for a friend. Okay. All right, so the problem is they've tried to reach out with your client at Haven for Hope, but he's not there. That's the report I have. And Judge, I've talked to pretrial a few times and neither one of us can find them. All right, I'm gonna issue a judge's warrant. If you get in touch with your client, let me know. Um, right. I've given your client 21 days to contact them and no success. I will do so, Judge. All right. Thank you. If, if you're able to get in touch with your client, the court will reconsider. Thank you, Judge. May I be excused? You may be excused. Thank you, Judge. All right. Uh, Miss. Monica Guerrero, are you there? Yes, John. All right, we'll take up your client. Judge, I'm sorry, for Rachel Adias, am I excused? We did the victim yes. impact. She's in the breakout room if probation needs to speak with her. Yes, she can be, ex she can be excused. Okay, thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, well, you can be excused, not her. Sorry about that. Who is, okay. the is there a prosecutor available to take a plea on Scarborough, please? Yes, Your Honor. All right, the court is calling 2019 CR 8528 State of Texas versus Arthur Scarborough. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. For the defense? Monica Guerrero for Mr. Scarborough, Your Honor. And are you Arthur Scarborough? Yes, Your Honor. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Scarborough, I'm showing you what's entitled defendant's consent to appear by video conference. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily consented to appear by video. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor, and yes. Court, court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Scarborough, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, oh, Your Honor, we're proceeding on the lesser included, I believe it's count one of aggravated sexual assault of a child and waiving the other allegations. No objection. 
Mr. Scarborough, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit and admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand the state is proceeding on the count that is an aggravated sexual assault of a child that's a first degree felony? The range of punishment is anywhere from five to 99 years or life imprisonment and up to $10,000. And did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea bargain agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses to this offense? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Scarborough, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. The court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea bargain agreement, the state is proceeding on the lesser included offense of aggravated sexual assault of a child. They're asking your punishment be assessed at a $1,500 fine. They recommend deferred adjudication. We'll take in consideration 2020 CR 8521. Chapter 62 compliance. Uh, you to be supervised by the um, sex offender unit. No contact with Lauren White, L A U R E N. Jenna, J E A N A Smith. Jamie, Kayla Sinclair. Did you understand that to be the plea bargain agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea bargain agreement? It is, Your Honor. State, is that the plea bargain agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of 10 years and there be a TAP evaluation. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that this offense requires a lifetime registration? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then to the offense as charged in count one, aggravated sexual assault of a child. How do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, any evidence to support the defendant's plea? State offers State's Exhibit 1 and its attachments, which includes the exhibits that I emailed yesterday that are too large to attach in Adobe. Any objections, uh, defense? No, Your Honor. Mrs. Scarborough, I'm showing you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it at all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments or review the same.
All right, at the reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. However, the court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything Judge, you wish to say? Sorry. Yes. We will have victim impact. All right. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, my, my client um, has not had any violations while on bond. These cases are extremely old. We're asking that the court accept the plea agreement. Additionally, he has a terminal illness of cystic fibrosis, and uh, he's been trying to cope with it. He hasn't gone anywhere. We are asking that the GPS monitor be removed today and that the court accept this offer of deferred adjudication. All right, Mr. Scarborough, is there anything you want to say? No, Your Honor. When's the last time you had contact with the complainant? Um, 2016, I believe, Your Honor. Showed up with CPS. Do you have any children living in your home? No. Do you have any children? No, Your Honor. Are you employed? No, Your Honor. What do you do? How do you support yourself? I'm retired from the, uh, and I have a retirement income. Retired from where? Sheriff's office. So you do understand that the complainant was in a vulnerable situation because her mom had passed and she was depending on you to care for her. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So how do you feel about that? Not good, Your Honor. All right. Is there a reason I should follow this plea bargain agreement? Are you asking? Um, yes, why should I follow this plea bargain agreement, Mr. Scarborough? I, like my attorney has said, I have a terminal illness. Um, but do I, you get a pass for that? No, I don't. Um, I have also got to take care of my 87 year old mother. Um, but that's, those are I, reasons I, I for know. other people. But do you get yeah. a pass for that? Everybody has a grandmother they need to take care of. Right. You know, so if somebody were to commit a murder, do their case get dismissed because, hey, I got a terminal illness and I got a grandmother to take care of or mother to take care of because. No, Your Honor. No. So again, why should I follow this? Well, that, that's up to you, Your Honor, as to whether you want to. No, I'm it. asking you, why should I? What is it about you that makes uh, me need or that I should follow this plea bargain agreement? I, I cannot afford to go to jail uh, because of my terminal illness. I would probably die within one month being incarcerated. Well, nobody can afford to go to jail. I don't think anybody on this Zoom screen wants to be at the Bear County Jail, whether uh -huh. they committed the offense or not. Nobody this wants is, to be in prison, yeah. whether they committed the offense or not. Right. This is the reason I'm taking the plea agreement. It's because of that and because I am here to have to be here to take care of my mother as long as I can. So is he on GPS? He, he has been on GPS, Your Honor, the entire time that he's been out on bond. He's had no violations. <clears throat> We've been... He's been very careful. He, if you look at his GPS, he doesn't go anywhere because of his illness. Any exposure to any type of disease could kill him at this point in his, at his uh, situation has been deteriorating. He has been caring for his 87 year old mother and he's, he's been very remorseful with me that all uh, this case has arisen. All right, this is what the court is gonna do. A $1,500 fine probated, 10 years deferred adjudication taking consideration 2020 CR 8521, chapter 62 compliance. Uh, he should be supervised by the sex offender unit. No contact with Lauren White, Jenna Smith, Jamie, Kayla Sinclair. GPS is to continue the fees are waived. There's to be no contact with minors. 
There should be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Bill visits one time per month. Rebecca, is there anything else that he needs? I can't give him community service hours because there's no community service hours for people with these offenses. No, ma'am, I think that's everything. Anything else you need from this court, Mr. Scarborough? No, Your Honor. I'm gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, and did sure. you electronically sign it? Yes, Your Honor. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Scarborough, I'm gonna send you to breakout room number four for victim impact. Uh, Ms. Guerrero, do you have anyone else with us? I, I do not, I just wanted to ask a question. So the court put him, left him on the GPS monitor. Is there a certain amount of time that, or do you want that for the whole 10 years? No, not for the whole 10 years. Uh, Ms. Guerrero, if you can bring it back in three months, the court will reconsider. Okay, just wanted to verify. Thank you. All right, and probation, you can go to breakout room number four and you can say you have victim impact state if they'll go to number four, please. And Ms. Guerrero, if you'd like to go to number four, you can go to number four or we can take up Adam because we still need to take up Adam Gonzalez and Harris with you. I don't, I do. Uh, you mm -hmm. want to go to number four? Um, I guess I should go to number four momentarily and then I'll come back for you. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Arius. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yes. <laughs> yes, Arius, if you could go to breakout room number four, please. And uh, state if you can send whoever you need to send there for victim impact. Okay, Your Honor, I sent them in there. So I'll All right, hop thank in there you. now. All right, who are the parties on Hunter and Damien? Victor Gomez for Reginald Hunter, ready, Judge. Uh, Mary Petrushek for Damien, Judge, We're, I'm ready. And who are the prosecutors on both these cases? Uh, Judge Mary Peterzak, um, I was talking with uh, Michelle. All right, she's in a breakout room, just give me a moment. Reginald Hunter was Marcus, Judge. Correct. And then uh, Neil Kappas on Victor Rivas. Yes, ma'am. I've conferred on Mr. Rivas. I've been given an offer. Um, he has another, a few cases that are open. And if I could have one reset, it's a first setting to talk to him about this and try to get it resolved, I would appreciate it. All right. So before we do that, if you can talk to your client and have him start his video because it appears that he doesn't know how to use Zoom. Okay. So maybe if you can call him. I'll, I'll text him right now, Judge, and tell him to get on video. All right, so then we will speak to Hunter. All right, the court is going to call. Is your client in custody, Mr. Gomez? Yes, sir. All right, the court is calling 2018 CR0164, State of Texas versus Reginald Hunter. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Marcus Sanders. For the defense? Victor Gomez. And are you Mr. Hunter? Just touch the space bar, it's the longest key on the keyboard. Okay, there's a long bar on the keyboard. Do you have a keyboard? Give me a thumbs up if you have a keyboard. Thank yes, you. I have a keyboard. All right, are you Mr. Hunter? Yes, I am. All right, we're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No objection. Any objection from the defense? No objections. Mr. Hunter, I'm showing you what's entitled defendant's consent to appear by video. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically sign it? Yes, I did. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily consented to appear by video. 
Next, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, I reviewed the document. Are you this, how do you pronounce your middle name? Marriott. Okay. Are you the same Reginald Marriott Hunter who was placed on community supervision in 2018 CR 0164 for the offense of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance penalty group one, four grams to 200 grams on August 3rd, 2021 for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. Date? Condition number 16C on or about the 28th day of February, 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Reginald Mariotti Hunter did then and there fail to attend and successfully complete intensive outpatient treatment with a private provider or with Bear County CSCD substance abuse outpatient treatment program in violation of condition number 16C. How do you plead to that true or not true? True. Say, any objections to the state waivers? No objections, Your Honor. Mr. Hunter, did you understand by pleading true to violation of 16C, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to eight years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine. Did you understand? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation 16C? Yes. All right, the court will find 16C true. Is there an agreement? There is, Judge. We're asking that you deny the motion, alter an to order a mental health evaluation, as well as DDRF. Is that the agreement? Yes, Your Honor, that's the agreement. Uh, Mr. Hunter, if when you're released from custody, do you have a place to stay? Yes. Who will you be staying with? With a friend. All right, have you had mental health treatment before? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with anything? No. Okay. All right. I see that some, another judge took this plea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add your community service hours. I don't see it written. But so it's 120 hours of community service restitution and the court will deduct 40 of those hours. If you provide proof of the COVID vaccination, the court is not requiring you to uh, take the COVID vaccination, but if you do, 40 of those hours will be waived. I'm gonna want field visits, two times per month, random. There should be no unsupervised conduct, contact with minors. Do you have any children? No. All right, proof of employment. Or um, SSI within 30 days of release. There should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. And he's to be placed back in intensive outpatient treatment upon release. Is there anything else from either side? Yes, Judge. And could I get a breakout room um, before you close the record with you and defense? All right, everyone, just give me a moment. Uh, if you'll go back to Courtroom, if you go to breakout room number one, please.
Those are the court's orders. Mr. Uh, Hunter, you're going to remain in custody until you are transferred uh, or the MIC, my off evaluation and the DDRF is completed. I'm going to send you to breakout room number one. I'm sorry, number four. And let me just find your client on the screen. All right, in defense, you can go to breakout room number one or either you can be excused. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, and everyone just give me one moment, please. Martin, can I talk to you? Bobby, we'll have to wait until they put us into a breakout room. Martin, do you want me to put you on the room now or wait until after? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. Both can go to five. Neil Kalfas? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Revis, I believe, has got his video operational. All right, and what is happening with Revis? Um, I, I've conferred with the state. They've made me an offer. It's the first time we've received an offer. Um, there's a, a misdemeanor case also that's associated with the case or that the defendant has. And I just want to figure out what I can do in the misdemeanor um, as well. And so if I could just get one more reset, it's a first setting so that I can confer with him, confer with the prosecutors on the misdemeanor and try to get a global resolution for Mr. Revis's issues. All right, uh, Norma, can I have a 30 day reset on uh, Mr. Revis, please? Thirty day reset. May I have excused? No, I have to get a. It's, a, it's, in, the, it's in that's, the chat. That's there. too far out. All right, we're going to come back on April 28th. And do you have all the discovery? Yes, ma'am. All right, you and your client are excused. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Revis, Mr. Revis, next time you come on Zoom, your video needs to be working. If your video is not working, your Zoom privileges are going to be revoked. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, I, I... I'm a caveman. I really don't know much about computers, but Neil told me what I need to do. Thank you very much, man. All right. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. And to the clerks, I do not have all the files on Mr. Revis.
All right, Matthew Allen. Yes, Judge, I conferred on Daryl Simmons. Uh, we don't have a solution on that case, though. All right, is your client in custody or on bond? He's on bond. Uh, where is Mr. Simmons? Uh, I don't know if he is on here today. Um, I didn't get, I was out of town, so I didn't see that there was a Zoom to confer. Uh, Mr. Simmons and I have contact and he knows to be in court tomorrow, um, March 29th. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for jury trial. All right, thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Judge Eduardo to approach when you have a moment. All right, Mr. Basil, who do you have? I have uh, John Juarez, Your Honor. John who? Juarez. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, criminal trial division or family violence? Uh, ag robbery, probably criminal trial. I don't think it's a family. I'm looking at the report. All right, I'm going to send you to breakout room number six. Thanks, John. Eduardo Jimenez, who do you have? Yes, sir, I have Isaiah. Uh, <clears throat> he is um, family violence, Your Honor. Um, What's the last name? Gonzal I'm sorry, Gonzalez, Your Honor. Isaiah Gonzalez. He is family violence. I conferred with uh, Michelle and also with uh, my client. Um, I did file a motion for continuance, Your Honor, um, because there's several witnesses we haven't uh, been able to have contact with yet on the case. Um, Michelle told me that she was not opposed um, and that... Um, uh, All right, Mr. Gonzalez, you're going to be brought over for jury trial tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm sorry, Judge. Now, we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Okay, is that in person, Judge? Yes, it is. It's for a jury trial. Okay, and the motion for continuance, I can re bring it then, or what? what's... Yeah, I mean, if you want to file a motion for continuance, you, you can, and the court will hear it. it. Um, All right, well, the court will make a decision on whether or not the court is granting that, but you'll need to be in court tomorrow at 9 a.m. Yes, Judge, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome, thank you. Are you Mr. Isaiah Gonzalez? Isaiah Gonzalez, raise your hand. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, you'll be brought over dressed for trial tomorrow. Uh, you'll be brought over in whatever clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to be brought over uh, dressed in some other um, clothing than what you have at the jail, you'll need to make arrangements to your with your attorney. Have you made arrangements with your attorney to be dressed? Mr. Gonzalez, have you made arrangements with no, your attorney to be dressed for jury trial? No, ma'am. Ms. Ferguson, can you have Mr. Eduardo Jimenez back in here, please? All right, Ernest Acevedo. Oh, good morning, Judge. I'm here on Juan Carper Hall. I did confer. Um, this case was indicted a month ago. There's some one of the cases I'm still trying to get my reports on. I was going to ask for a 30-day reset. An offer was made. I did convey it to Mr. Carvajal, but I do need to review some of the discovery, and I think a reset would help us potentially get the case resolved. Is your client um, in custody or on bond? He's on bond, and he's present on Zoom. My computer's joined. Ah, there we are. He, he was indicted in February, Judge, and so I'm, I'm putting everything together, but we did confer and get an offer today. Okay, just one second. All 
right, Ms. Ferguson or Mr. Carvajal, can I have a one month reset, please? All right, we're gonna come. We're gonna come back on April twenty eighth. Uh, Judge, I'm gonna be out of town on that day. Can we do a? Uh, are you are you having court on the 29th? Uh, just one moment. Let me check the calendar. No. Can we do the That's... following week, please? All right, Ms. Fergus, can you put that on the following week? All right, we'll see you back on May 3rd. Thank you, Judge. Appreciate that. Thank you. And you said you did receive an offer? Yes, ma'am. All right, you and your client are excused. Thank you, Judge. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. And Ms. Um, Peter Zach, where is Michelle Hayden? I'm here. All right, thank you. All right, the court is going to call 2019 CR 4171W State of Texas versus Alexander Medina Damian. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. For the defense. Uh, you're on mute. My apologies, but Judge. No problem for the defense. Uh, Mary Peters, act for defense, Judge. We're ready to proceed. And are you Alexander Damien? Judge, yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No objection from the defense, Judge. Mr. Damien, I'm showing you what's entitled defendant's consent to appear by video conference. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically sign it? Oh, yes, I did. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily consented to appear by video. Next, I'm going to show you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Are you the same Damian Alexander Medina who was placed on community supervision in 2019 CR 4171W for the offense of Assault family household member previous conviction on September 13, 2019, for a term of four years. Is that you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Judge. Yes, sir. yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number one on or about the 20th day of December 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Damian Alexander Medina. Then and there failed to comply with the rules and regulations of the felony drug court by failing to reside at an Oxford House sober house living facility in violation condition number 41. How do you plead to that? True or not true? That was true, Judge Boyd. State? Judge, we're waiving the other allegations and there is an agreement. All right, any objections to the waiver? No objections, Your Honor. Mr. Damien, did you understand by plea and true to violation of condition number 41, the court could find it true, grant the motion. Just one moment. This is written completely different. No. 
Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 41, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to six years in prison? Did you understand? Uh, yes, yes, Judge Boyd. Yes, Judge. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 41? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Judge. Court will find violation of condition 41 true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Your Honor. The agreements for revocation and to amend the underlying sentence to three years TDC and sentence the defendant. Is that the agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. In addition, I would like to add that Mr. Mr. Medina has uh, 673 days in and uh, also 183 days that uh, for SADF, uh, for and we would like credit for the 856 days, Judge. All right, Mr. Uh, Damien, are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, it actually wasn't SADF, it was a uh, state, it was a uh, TDC ISF. And I did, I did 183 days and I did get my GED over there. All right, are you waiving your right to appeal? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Is that a yeah. yes? Yes. All right. Then the court will follow your agreement. The court, as previously stated, has found violation of condition number 41 true. The court will grant the motion, sentence you to three years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, and credit for any successful completion of inpatient treatment. Next, I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically sign it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, right, yes, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, Judge Boyd. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes, I do understand, ma'am. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Judge Boyd. All right. All right, we can go off the record. Mr. Damien, good luck to you. If you have a drug or alcohol agreement, you, I mean, drug or alcohol problem, there are plenty of inpatient treatment places where you can go to get help. If you I continue, like to yes. Judge Boyd, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, you know, Judge, I am so, so uh, appreciative of you and what you have done for Felony Drug Court, for helping people and, and people that struggle with addiction like me. I love Judge Glenn and, and I appreciate you, Judge Boyd. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, so you know how to stay on track, right? And stay clean and sober? Yes, I have. I have the best one of the. I have the best family in the world, uh, Judge. I have Judge Glenn and I have Ashley Phillips, my case manager. Even though I'm not in drug court, they told me they told me, hey, you'll always be able to come out here and ask for help. All right, so there you have it. You can ask for help if you need it. Okay, don't wait until things are dire and you're in dire need and there are dire straits to ask for help. There's no harm in asking for help. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Judge Boyd. Thank you so much. All right, good luck to you, Mr. Damien. Thank you, Judge. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Ms. I just wanted to know which one I'm Your Honor, can Kenneth Williams be excused? Yes, one moment. Who's asking to be excused? No, Kenneth Williams. No. Okay. All right, uh, Bob, who do you have? Mr. Hicks, who do you have? You're on mute. Of course I am. Yes, anyway, I have Juan Lopez. Is it criminal no. trial division or family violence? It's criminal trial, I believe. Well, oh. yeah, it's murder of habitation. This is criminal trial. All right, I'm going to send you to breakout room number five. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Gail Calderado. Excuse me, ma'am. How do Darala. I get to my break room? Excuse what do you me. Have? Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. I have uh, Gilbert Sanchez, and this is on a bond matter. Is uh, it criminal it, trial division or family violence? Uh, I believe it's criminal trial division. It's a retaliation oh. case. All right. I'm going to see you to number eight. All right. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Excuse me, uh, Robert Mauer. Judge Boyd. Who do you have? I have everybody. Um, <laughs> I have Antonio Casablanca. We're getting ready to do a plea on that one to a misdemeanor. Uh, Michelle's working on paperwork. I have a PS Sion of Geronimo Hernandez. Uh, and Michelle said we were recalled for Jeremy Rothany, but I'm picking the jury with you tomorrow on him. So I didn't know about yes. today's setting. Oh, no, it's just this is the last day. So Hernandez is what is happening with Hernandez? Uh, we, it's a sentencing. Okay. I, just need to, I just need to go over the PSI with him and I'll be ready to go. All right. And then you have Rothany. Yeah, we'll be there tomorrow morning. We're, we're both, I think both sides are ready. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, who do you want to speak with first? Uh, I've, I've already talked to Casablanca. He, we're just waiting for paperwork. I just need to talk to Mr. Uh, Hernandez and go over the PSI and we'll be ready. Is Hernandez in custody or yes. on bond? Custody. On bond, Your Honor. He's in the oh, he's on bond. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I take it back. All right. I'm going to send you to breakout room number uh, three. Thank you, Judge. Excuse me, Judge Boyd. I'm sorry. Just a moment. Just a moment. Brenda, it's, it's getting, you know, it's a Monday. Everybody put some patience in your pocket. You will get to where you're going. Charles Bonk. And then after Charles Bonk, it will be Mr. Schaefer. Yes, Judge. Yes. I have Damone Wyatt and Joshua Carroll. I conferred with the state on Joshua Carroll. I'll need to break out with him at, after this. And I still need to confer, I think, with Joe Ray on Damone Wyatt. All right. So you want to speak with Mr. Carroll first? Yes, please. All right. Joshua Carroll, I'm going to send you uh, to breakout room number seven. All right. How you doing? You okay? Uh, I'm doing great. Join Charles Bonk. I'm going to send you to number seven. Seven. Okay. Thank you. Yes. George Schaefer. Yes, Your Honor. I'm here on Jesse Esparza. Yes. He's present as I've seen his uh, image up here on the screen. Is it criminal trial division or family violence? Family violence, Your Honor. Have you spoken with the prosecutor? No, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to send you to breakout room number 10. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Cornelius Cox, and then it'll be Gary Chirac. Judge, we're here on Rogelio Sanchez. Okay. Ah. And we're dealing with Ryan. I can talk to them, Judge. Cornelius is on mute. All right, so Mr. Uh, Groomer, if you can send them to a breakout room of your choosing. Will do, Judge. Thank you. Uh, Gary Chirac. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Yes, yes ma'am. Here on Kenneth Williams or Germanic Williams. <clears throat> Criminal trial division or family violence? Criminal trial. All right, I'm going to send you to breakout room uh, number seven. Now, who has been calling my name because they need to go to a breakout room and don't know how to get there? It's uh, me, Lopez. Did somebody call your name and request that you go to a breakout room? Uh, yes, ma'am. My attorney. No. Did your attorney spe specifically call you and request that you go to a breakout room? Um, I, I, I don't remember. I, I don't recall. I just know that. Uh, Who's your attorney? Mr. Hicks. Uh, I'm sorry, who did you say, Brenna? Bob Hicks. Yes. Did Bob Hicks ask you to go to a breakout room? The answer to that question would be no. 
And what I told everyone when they appeared on this Zoom screen is that your attorney is not gonna call you to a breakout room and do not go to a breakout room unless you're specifically called by name and asked to go to a breakout room. Nobody asked you to go to a breakout room, Mr. Lopez. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, Bill Davidson. You're on mute. Hi, Your Honor. Yeah, yes, Your Honor, hi. Uh, I am in, in your courtroom physically and I'm in one of the little witness rooms with my client. And I was just going to ask if I could go to a breakout room with one of the prosecutors to talk to them. Who's your client? It's Juan Montemayor. Criminal Trial Division or Family Violence? I believe it's Criminal Trial Division. It's a, um, Indecency by Contact. I'm not sure. Oh, that will be Family Violence. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. No problem. I'm going to send you to breakout room number two. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Christopher Castro. Yes, Judge, uh, we're here for the MTR and Deontay Hero. I believe the paperwork has been signed. All right. Who's the prosecutor on Deontay Harrell? It's Ms. Hayden, Judge. All right. Let me just find your client. All right, the court is calling 2017 CR 7886 State of Texas versus Deontay Harrell. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. For the defense? Christopher Castro for the defense. And are you Mr. Harrell? You're muted. Yes, Your Honor. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. Any objections from the state? No, Your Honor. Any objection from the defense? No objections, Judge. Mr. Harrell, I'm showing you what's entitled defendant's consent to appear by video conference. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you electronically sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily consented to appear by video. And if we can go off the record for a moment, please, Brenna. Mr. Harrell, I just want to say how much I appreciate that you're dressed appropriately for court and that you realize this is a professional setting. I greatly appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're gonna go back on the record. Mr. Harrell, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you? Yes. Are you the same Deontay Marquise Harrell who was placed on community supervision and cause number 2017-CR-7886 for the offense of assault, family choking, strangulation on May 2nd, 2019 for a term of 10 years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, State. Violated condition number two, on or about the 14th day of October, 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Dante Marquise Harrell, did then and there use an illegal substance, namely marijuana, in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True, Your Honor. State? Violated condition number five, in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Dante Marquise Harrell, did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of November or December, in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True, Your Honor. Violated condition number 15G, on or about the 11th day of January 2022 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Dante Marquise Harrell, did then and there fail to apply for or provide documentation of attendance and comply with all rules, regulations, instructions, and financial agreements as directed by the court and or supervision officer or the head of authorized personnel of the following program, Batters Intervention Prevention Program in violation number 15G. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True, Your Honor. State? Your Honor, we're asking that you uh, find the allegation. Well, well, wait, wait one second. Oh, sorry. Yes. So, state, uh, as to the other violations. We're waiving those. 
Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Uh, Harold, did you understand by pleading true to violation of conditions 2, 5, and 15G, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations 2, 5, and 15G? Yes, ma'am. Court will find 2, 5, and 15G true. Is there an agreement? Yes, Your Honor. We ask okay. that you deny the state's motion to revoke and you alter and amend the conditions to include register for BIP course within 10 days, drug patch for 90 days, and weekly reporting for 90 days. Is that the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Harrell, I have a few questions for you. Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. So with regards to the BIP classes, has that, does that have to do with finances? Can you afford the BIP class? What's going on? Uh, unfortunately, my counselor had a <clears throat> two day, um, he took two days off and he made it a double class and I ended up missing that double class. So it ended up taking two days away from the three days that I did have. So it's more just an attendance thing. Okay. Now then the other thing is with regards to the drug issue. What are you using and why? Um, marijuana, Your Honor, and uh, I don't really have an excuse other than stress and PTSD and OCD. All right, everyone, just give me a moment, please. All right, sorry about that. So, uh, Mr. Harrell, have, has probation helped you with any type of mental health issues? Or are you seeing someone? Uh, currently, I am not seeing anybody. Okay. All right, so, State, you wanted the BIP, re enrollment in BIP, and what else were you requesting? Uh, drug patch for 90 days and weekly reporting for 90 days. Okay. All right. This is what the court did, will do. The court will deny the motion, alternate main conditions. You're to re-enroll in BIP within 10 days. Do you understand, Mr. Harrell? Yes. I am already enrolled, Your Honor. Thank you. And when's the last time you used drugs? It has been over a month now. 
All right, so we're gonna do testing for levels. And then uh, once those levels are at uh, zero or negative, uh, we'll put you on regular uh, testing. Okay. And then we're gonna do a referral for Center for Healthcare Services. Are you employed? I am, Your Honor. What do you do? I am a manager at 7-Eleven. Okay. So we're gonna do a referral for Center for Healthcare Services just to see if you need any help with any other issues. Okay, Mr. Harrell? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Harrell, is there anything else you need from the court? No, ma'am. All right, then we will close the record. And I'm gonna send you to breakout room number four. And Thank Mr. You, uh, Castro, can you write this down for me? And I'm gonna need you to go to breakout room number four and give this exactly to probation as I said. Mr. Harrell pled true to violations two, five, and 15G. It's denied alternate man conditions for him to re-enroll in BIP within 10 days. Let probation know he states he's already enrolled. I want him tested for levels. And once those levels are uh, negative or zero, it can be regular UAs. And then we're gonna do a referral for a Center for Healthcare Services. And I'm sending you both to breakout room number four. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Judge, I'm ready on my PSI whenever the court is on Geronimo Hernandez. It's one of Michelle's cases as well. All right, let me find you on the Zoom screen. And is your client in, in the courtroom? He is, yes. All right, to the courtroom, could you have Mr. Um, Geronimo Hernandez, please? Yes, Your Honor. And Michelle Hayden, are you ready on Mr. Geronimo Hernandez? Judge, can I run to the restroom just real quick? <laughs> yes. Thanks. Judge, we have an update on Rogelio Sanchez. All right. I'm not sure if Ryan is. Ready. I'm here, Judge. Okay. Okay. Judge, and, and I think I can give you um, part of the update, Judge, when you're ready. All right, just give me one moment. All right, is this your client that's on the screen, 16D? Or is he 17 now? Rogelio Sanchez, please raise your hand. All right, so we know it's not him. Emmanuel Sanchez. All right, thank you. All right, are you Rogelio Sanchez? Raise, raise your hand. Thank you. All right, what is happening with Mr. Sanchez? Judge, um, this is one that uh, we've been coming back for discovery, Judge. I have a disk from, or I'm sorry, a thumb drive from Ms. Garza that I am uploading the discovery that the extra discovery, we were having a difficult time getting to them through the normal means. I have the majority of it done. The only thing is there was a couple file types that were having some difficulty going on there. They weren't working on there. I have my IT department working on that. Um, I checked in with them late last week and they said, hopefully that they would have it done today or tomorrow. Um, I, had, I went up there this morning, but wasn't able to get anyone. But nonetheless, I'm just trying to get a couple of these last files on there so that I can get everything to them that they are not getting through Veripic on the thumb drive that she provided. Okay, and there, there are no cell phone dumps, are there? I believe there are cell phone dumps also, Judge. All right, and do you have access to that to give to them? That, that's what I'm giving them, Judge. Yes, I, I'm. Uh, I, I think the files that are having issues are not cell phone dumps. I think those are working. They're they're very large, but the files that are working are it's some weird file format. I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think it's related to a cell phone dump. Okay. All right, Miss Ferguson on Sanchez. Can you give me a 45 day reset for discovery, please?
All right, we're going to come back on May 16th. That'll work, Judge. All right, do y'all need to speak with your client or no? Um, no, Judge, I visited him. I'll, I'll go see him again at the jail. All right, Ms. Ferguson, can you let them know that 17F can go back? Just let me know, Ryan. All right. Thank you. Hold it, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Wait, we may excuse Bye -bye. Judge. Yes, you may be excused. And Judge, remember my motto is that the, the Cinderella story that always ends the same way. That's true. And you know what? I use that play. whenever I'm picking my my put my uh, people in tournaments. Cinderella, the, the clock always strikes midnight. Like 12. The story hasn't changed yet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Judge. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye. All right, Thank to the judge, I think the clock strikes at eight. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, just one second. All right, so we're on Mr. Um, Geronimo Hernandez, correct? That's correct, Judge. All right, the court is calling 2018 CR 13168 State of Texas versus Geronimo Hernandez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michelle Hayden for the state. Robert Maurer for defendant, Your Honor. And are you Mr. Um, Geronimo Hernandez? Yes, Your Honor. We're proceeding by video because of the pandemic. However, the court will note for the record that the defendant is in the courtroom. Any objections to us proceeding by video, state? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, Hernandez, do you have any objections with this proceeding by video? No, Your Honor. All right. According to the plea bargain agreement, you pled true to the uh, enhancement allegation. The state is requesting that your punishment be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine and the state opposes your application. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? I went over that with my client, Judge, that's correct. Any objection, state? No, Your Honor, I did just email. Um, the victim provided a very short victim impact statement. Um, she also plans on giving one to the court, but um, under this code, um, the state would ask that the court consider that prior to rendering its sentence. Any objection, Mr. Maurer, have you received I don't, uh, I'm sure I object, Judge. I just don't know. Why yet? Uh, <laughs> I just got this. All right. I would object to hear. I would object to hearsay. Deny confrontation. Okay, just one moment. All right. Is 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 the uh, person here for questioning, Miss Hayden? Um, she did want to give victim impact. She didn't want to testify. I'm not sure if she's logged on or not yet. Okay. Because I understand um, the rule you're going under, uh, Ms. Hayden, but the court's concern is that the defense is just receiving notice of this today. Yeah, and, and I understand. I just got it this morning as well. We told her to be in touch, but. Okay. All right, um, then the, de the defense's objection will be uh, sustained. And for the record, uh, the court reviewed the document in order to make a ruling on defense's motion. However, the court will not consider um, the email in the court's ruling today. Thank you, Judge. All right, uh, state you're opposed to the application? We are. Uh, do you have any witnesses? We don't have any witnesses to present, just argument. All right, defense, any witnesses? Judge, I'd like to call Ger uh, Geronimo Hernandez, please. All right, Mr. Hernandez, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you saw, could you raise your right hand, Mr. Hernandez? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record, please. Geronimo Hernandez. All right, defense. Uh, Geronimo, you understand we're here today because you're asking the judge to consider your application for deferred adjudication, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and why do you think the judge should um, um, consider your uh, your application for deferred. So I just want to say uh, I'm sorry. You know, 
I um, just need a chance, you know, to, to get it right, you know, and do this right. And uh, apologize, you know, for anything that was caused, you know. Okay. And if you're given uh, uh, deferred, you understand there'll be classes you'll have to take and um, there'll be sex offender registration as well. You understand that, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're, you believe you can uh, complete that successfully? Yes, sir. Can I pass a witness? Say. Hey. Good morning, Mr. Hernandez. Um, you want to be given a chance in this case, right? Yes. But yes. it's true that you've already been given chances with probation before. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You were granted probation for another victim of crime, criminal mischief, five to 500 to 1500 in 1996. And you screwed up that probation and were revoked and sentenced to jail. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then in 2000, uh, you pled to assault intentionally, knowingly of a child, and you were actually sentenced to prison, given shock probation, screwed that up, and were sentenced to prison again. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you are here to say you're sorry today, are you saying you're sorry for raping your own daughter? Is that what you're apologizing for? Sorry for everything. Okay. And uh, molesting your other daughter as well that is being taken into consideration as part of this plea. Yes, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. I have no other questions, Judge, just argument. All right, the court will hear argument. State? Judge, this case, these facts alone are not deserving of probation. He's in a position where he's supposed to be protecting his daughters. Uh, he violated them in the worst way possible. The case that he's pleading to, the judges read the evidence in this case in the pre-sentence investigation. He was supposed to take his daughter to school where she could learn and grow up and become a good person. And instead he pulls over and rapes her and makes her suck his penis. <clears throat> and after this, the other daughter came out with allegations of him touching her as well. He's victimized this community for a number of years. He's already been given chances on probation and probation is just not good enough for what he's done and his previous history in this case. All right, uh, defense. Judge, uh, I'd ask the court to grant his application for deferred adjudication. Uh, he's accepted responsibility, he's expressed remorse. And I think if given the opportunity, he would uh, complete his deferred successfully. Mr. Hernandez, why should the court give you deferred adjudication? So I just want to get everything right, Your Honor, and, and live. But I mean, can't that be getting, can't you get things right at the prison? Yes, Your Honor, but I, I feel that I, I could do better out here in this world. Everybody at the Bear County Jail thinks they can do better in the world, right? Even people in prison think they can do better at the world. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so other than you feeling that you can do better outside in the free world, why shouldn't I send you to prison? So I'm truly sorry, Your Honor, for everything that I've done. All right, court is gonna find you um, guilty. And as previously stated, the court found the enhancement true. Court will follow your plea bargain agreement, sending you to five years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine, time and money to rank concurrent, taking consideration 2020 CR 11334, Chapter 62 compliance. There's to be no contact with Serena Hernandez, Andrea Tshuti, T S C H U D Y, and there are to be no charges filed um, with indecency contact with Andrea Tshuti. And you understand that that's lifetime registration, Mr. Hernandez? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. 
All right. Uh, good luck to you, uh, Mr. Hernandez. We can go off the record. Mr. Hernandez, you know, you have to be responsible for your actions. I'm going to send you uh, to breakout room number one. My understanding is there is victim impact. Uh, so, Court, if you can go to number one, and Ms. Hayden, if you could send the parties to number one who you would like to stand. Uh, anyone else, Mr. Maurer? Uh, Judge, I do need to speak with Mr. Casablanca about my plea bargain that I'm working on with Michelle. He's on bond. Is he in uh, the courtroom or? Uh, no, no, he was, uh, I talked to him. He may, uh, he may still be in the breakout room. I conferred with him earlier. Michelle put me in with him. All right. Do you need to speak with him again or no? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to, I need to talk. I need to find out. I think I have the wrong email address for him. All right, Mr. Casablanca, if you'll go to breakout room number four, please. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Roland Rolando Arguez, who's your client? Hi, Judge. I'm here for an off docket matter, so I can wait till the very end. Thank you. I appreciate that. You just brighten up everybody's Monday. Thank you, Judge. All right. Uh, Martin Guerra, then Charles Bonk, then Kelly Pibble. Martin Guerra. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I've conferred with the state on both of my clients, Mr. Jackson, as well as Mr. Kochansky. Um, we don't have any agreements at this time. Um, Mr. Kochansky, uh, the offer has been rejected and we would like to go ahead and proceed to our trial date. All right, just one second. Um, let's start with Mr. Bobby Jackson. All right, what is happening with Mr. Bobby Jackson? When I conferred, um, one thing, I do need to get a flash drive over to the DA's office to get the, some CPS records. Uh, they were previously tendered to me in the form of a disk, but there's been some problems with that. Um, but we did confer as well. Um, the client's still rejecting the offer. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I'm Mr. Bobby Jackson. Can I have a jury trial date in the jury box? I mean, in the chat box, please. No, one second, Judge. Let me just clarify. Okay, yes, Judge, it's correct. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Jackson, your jury trial date is going to be April 19th. Your plea deadline date has expired. The court will not accept any plea bargain agreements in this case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we'll have you brought over for trial on April 19th. Uh, you will be brought over in whatever clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to have some other clothing, you'll need to make arrangements with your attorney. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. And Mr. Guerra, if you need some help uh, facilitating that, the court will do what it can. Norma yes, Jackson can go back. And Mr. You said Kodan Kochansky? Yes, Your Honor. All right, what is happening with Mr. Kochansky? Your Honor, after conferring, my offer is rejected the state's offer. All right, Norma, can I have a jury trial date in the box for Mr. Kochansky? All right, Mr. Kochansky, your jury trial date is April 26. Your plea deadline date has expired. The court will not accept any plea bargain agreements in this case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right, Norma, you can let Mr. Kochansky go back. He is listed as Kochansky. Uh, do you Thank have you anyone judge. else with us? That was it, Your Honor. All right, then you are excused. Thank you, Judge. All right, Mr. Bonk. Yes, yes. Judge, I'm here. Um, I, right. conferred, I conferred with Mr. Carroll. It's our intent to be present in your courtroom tomorrow morning. All right, we will see you tomorrow. Mr. Carroll, you'll need to be dressed for trial. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, and you are excused.
Judge, I also have Damone Wyatt, and I was trying to confer with the state on that, and I haven't had a chance yet. All right, I will make sure to put you in a booth. Thank you. Okay, let me remove part of your name. I'll, I'll work on that, Judge. All right, and it's uh, Wyatt Criminal Trial Division or Family Violence? Criminal Trial Division, Judge. Okay, I'll send you back to a breakout room and I'm gonna send you to breakout room number five. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm trying to find you on the Zoom. Which breakout room you, oh, there you are. All right, uh, Monica Guerrero. Hi, Judge. So I still, I need to talk to Ryan Groomer to get paperwork ready for me on Mr. Adam Gonzalez. I have a, an email address for him now. And I still need to confer with Ms. Hayden about the bond conditions for Harris, Talia Harris. All right. So um, let me see, where is Ryan Groomer? I'm right, I'm right here, Judge. I can jump into a breakout room with him. All right. Can you uh, put her in breakout room number eight, please? Will do, Judge. Thank you. All right, Kelly Piddle. Yes, Judge. Uh, Daniel Trevino is logged on to Zoom, Judge, and I've conferred with the state. All right, what His is happening? Is, we have, uh, as of 10 months ago, applied for pretrial diversion uh, and a pre approval with uh, Marcus Sanders. Uh, so this we just need another student to hear back from on that. All right. Is your client, um, is his case indicted or not indicted? It is indicted. And his full name is Daniel Trevino. There's no middle name. Uh, David. Daniel David Trevino, Judge. All right. All right, to the clerks, can I have the file on Daniel Trevino, please? Daniel David Trevino. So has he been approved um, for PTD? Pre-approved from Marcus. It's the All first right. opportunity to confer with the state on it and he said to go ahead and apply and we just submitted that. All right, which page is Mr. Trevino on? Page 12, Judge. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I need a um, PTD date, please. And we'll recall the bond forfeiture on Mr. Trevino. Mr. Trevino, why were you late? Um, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, I, my dad and my mom have been really sick. Uh, might be able to hear it in the background. My dad's just been uh, really like, I don't know, having all these problems. I had to get I had to go pick him up earlier from the hospital. Uh, I was really uh, uh, kind of unaware because the number that uh, they, Mr. Pitt was calling was uh, my dad's phone number. So I didn't really know about it until my dad told me. And then that's when as soon as I remembered or like noticed, I just I just got on instantly. Sorry about that, Judge. All right, you're coming back on April 25th. All right, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. Mr. Piddle, if you don't have anyone else, you're excused. I'll see you too, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Robert Bauer, you're back. Yeah, Judge, I, I had the wrong email for my client. It was an old one. I chatted Norma, the new one, and I gave the new email to Michelle. I signed my share of the paperwork, so I don't know if, I don't know how this technology stuff works. How <laughs> that, yeah. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you to breakout room number one with the clerk, and I'm going to send Mr. Casablanca to number one with the clerk, so okay. if the clerks could go to number one. I don't know about little, little genies that carry the, the motions and stuff, or what happens. There you go. All right, Mr. Hicks. Good Good day, Judge. Good day. Um, 
somehow Mr. Lopez, my appointment, Mr. Lopez case <clears throat> got misfiled. And I didn't know about this hearing until, well, actually the, they sent out the invitation Friday night at about 7.45 and my wife and I were out of town over the weekend. And when I checked my email yesterday, well, last night, it was a little late to find out anything. Okay, well, what I can tell everybody so that the, you know, everybody will be clear. At one point in time in the 187 District Court, we would send notices to attorneys for hearings a month in advance. And then attorneys would not show up because they would lose that notice in their email. So what we discovered is sending it out the day before, which is difficult for the coordinator because she has to send everything out the day before. This is where we are. So, Mr. Lopez, are you ready to proceed, Mr. Hicks, or no? Uh, Your Honor, I have never seen the motion to revoke, so I have obviously never discussed it with my client. Okay. And All I right. would request a reset to Wednesday so I can get that done. All right. Do you want the probation to send you the motion to revoke now? Well... If I were not in the courthouse, having just come out of a hearing in the 226, that would be wonderful. Okay, so do you want her to send it to you or do you not want her to send it to you? Because she's going to have to send it to you anyway. Please send it to my email. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Reyes, can you forward the motion to revoke to Mr. Hicks's email, please? If you just this put it in the chat, please. And if you'll put that in the chat box, please. And Judge, I just sent you a chat. All right, thank you. Okay, and then uh, Mr. Hicks, I'm sending you to breakout room uh, number six. And Mr. Lopez, you can go to number six with your attorney. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Leo Gomez. Gomez? Oh, I'm sorry. It's been a long Monday. Leo, you know, it's, 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 I'm still on your uh, Leo Palooza first month again. So, <laughs> almost a we'll little blame bit. It on that. <laughs> um, so, uh, we have an offer on Mr. Vargas. However, um, I needed to verify if the evaluations need to be done before sentencing. Are there for a TAP and mental health evaluation? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. I mean, I'll go back and talk to my client real quick, Judge, and I think we'll have an agreement. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bo Wood, who do you have? Good morning, Judge. Uh, my client is Kayla White. She had a pending case. She's picked up two. I, I believe the cases were pending, but she's been indicted on them and now has a warrant. The warrant is not for uh, conduct on her bond. It's the fact she's been indicted. So now she has to be magistrated and the bond set. And so, and there's co-defendants, so she knows the amount. And uh, she's been working on it. She told me this morning on a text that she's indigent, but still working on trying to gain the uh, so I'm bond. I'm assuming she's, I texting, she's texting you, so she's not on the Zoom? Well, I believe she's on Zoom this morning. I'm present, uh, ma'am. All there right, Miss uh, she... White, you'll need to be in the courtroom. We'll see you at 2 p.m. Thank you, Judge. All right, what thank day? you, Mr. Wood. I'm sorry, ma'am, what day was that? That would be today. Two, two o'clock. Okay, thank you. I I'll call you when I get through, Miss White. Thank Can you, I Mr. White. Your Honor? Yes, Miss White, we're located at 300 Dolorosa. It's on the fourth yes, floor. I'm aware. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Joseph Appel. Yes, Your Honor. I was working. Yes, Your Honor. I was working on paperwork for a plea. Um, I received the plea packet, and I let Norma know that I haven't received yet the consent to proceed via Zoom or the certification right to appeal. She says she sent it a reminder as well, but I've checked all my emails and I don't have that yet. Okay, we're gonna so take care of that. That's what I'm waiting on. All right, we'll take care of that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Charles Bond. Yes, Judge. Can I break out with my client, Damone Wyatt? 
Okay, I'm going to send you to number four. Let me find your client. He's under REVVL4. The four was a hint. Okay. Sending you to number four. Gary Chirac. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Germanic Kenneth Williams, I've conferred with the state. Uh, I guess we're ready for the motion to suppress and then trial. All right, Ms. Ferguson, Germanic Williams, you're going to be back, Mr. Williams. It's going to be back tomorrow for trial. He needs to be dressed for trial. They have a letter on file. All right, thank you. You're excused. We'll see you uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Judge, are we doing the pleas now or at two? We're going to do them at two so that Brenna can have her break. Okay. All right. Can I come log? My client's working on its paperwork now. Can I just log back on it too? Yes, you can. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right, everyone, we're going to stop live stream. Brenda, you're excused. And we'll be back at 2.30.